Hi, ladies. Morning, morning, morning. It's a beautiful morning, and it is Monday, and I love this topic today. I'm so excited for Daphne to share on her Live Power Hour her nine best tips, but real quick, Daphne is from Elk Grove, California. She's a three-star diamond. I'm going to have her tell you a little bit more about her story and then jump right into the topic at hand, so take it away, girlfriend. All right, so hi, ladies. Happy belated Mother's Day for all the mamas out there. Um, hope you had a good weekend. So really quick before we jump into my topic, um, as Brittany mentioned, my name is Daphne. I have been a coach. April is my five-year anniversary. So, you know, thinking back five years ago, uh, would, I, would I have thought that I'd be speaking on a call today? No, I purely started off as the typical uh, discount coach story. I was on the phone with my girlfriend that had signed me up at the time, literally with a hand in the air, like, I am not working this business in the back of my mind, I was going to do Shakeology and Turbo Fire and then pretty much give it a couple weeks and quit because like my husband said, um, you quit everything. So <laughs> that was actually my motivation to not quit, quit was to prove him wrong. So here I am five years later still proving him wrong, right? <laughs> um, and it has been just life changing as you know, we hear from everybody's stories. Um, I was a discount coach from about April till um, January of 2012. That's when I decided to dive into personal development like Beachbody had recommended. I picked up Shalane Johnson's book, Push, and that changed everything for me. I literally still have the piece of paper four years later where I wrote down my goals because at the time I was 35, I want to say, um, and I had never written goals. I mean, I had always had great jobs. You know, I, I was on a career path. I had never once wrote down a goal. So I am all about goals now because once I did that, um, if you've ever read her book, Push, to this day, you know, months later, going off and crossing off different ranks and different income goals and, you know, just personal goals as well. It was awesome. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and jump right into um, my topic for today. And these are the nine power hour activities. If you've ever been on a call with me, you know, my favorite number is nine. So I center everything around um, my top nine tips of, of everything. It stems back to my volleyball days when I was number nine. So let me share with you my screen. And I want to jump right into um, a PowerPoint. And it's not a huge PowerPoint, you guys. Don't have to worry about it. Okay. Oops. Well, nine power hour activities. So kind of how this all stemmed was a few months back, I want to say probably about four or five months ago, um, my upline, upline, upline is Teresa Hansen. And she started doing these live team power hours within her actual team. Um, how she had originally set it up, and I think she still might do it this way. Our team is kind of taken it and, and twisted it a little bit to meet the needs of our team. She'll nominate different leaders in different time zones. So she might have a power hour at nine o'clock at night, but she's having me on the east or on the west coast do it at nine o'clock my time. Someone on the east coast is doing it at nine o'clock their time. So ideally we have about four different coaches. It's about a four hour time span because one coach is run, running it for an hour, then the next coach will hop on when it's their time for their time zone. We found that that worked perfectly. Um, in my experience, when you do these, and I'm kind of jumping, eight to nine o'clock at night, your time zone um, works best. Because anything later, like I'm on the West Coast, so nine o'clock my time is midnight for the East Coast. We um, will lose some of our coaches that way, but then we do these actually two times a month. So we try to switch up the times um, to accommodate the needs of all time zones. The only time, as a tip, um, that we found that doesn't really work that well is like right at the lunchtime. We had this great idea that we would do like, you know, brown bag, power hour lunches, and everyone would just log in during their lunchtime, especially if they're at work, they could just take that hour for their lunchtime, and it, it has just failed for us. So do what works for you, play around with the different times. I like to do nine at nine, because nine o'clock at night, my time works. So it's, you know, I'm always about theme. So it's my top nine power hour activities at nine o'clock. Okay. So, you know, when we do challenge groups and things like that, we're always creating an event to invite these people to. Well, and you guys might already know this, but this is actually something that I discovered when Teresa started rolling out these live power hours. She actually schedules it right within her team. So it's not a public event. It's a team event. So I did a screenshot to the left here where it shows this is my team. My team is Team Realize. So if you click on the little um, you know, bubbles next to notification, you're actually able to create an event right when, within your team. 
the benefit of that is you don't have to go out and then singly invite every single person that's on your team. As long as they're in your group, you'll see in the screenshot too, there's a box that says, do you want to invite all members of Team Realize? Heck yeah, I do. That's a one shot. I just click that box. Every single member in that group gets an invite. And this is great because these live power hours, there's actually about four of us leaders that do these. We, we rotate who's hosting them every couple weeks. And it's not like I have to create the event, send it to that leader, say, hey, post this in your team, invite all your team members. It's a one-stop shop. And, and since I'm kind of the leader of Team Realize and all the other leaders fall under me, they don't have to do anything extra um, when we're creating these events. We just create them right within the team and then everybody's invited. Okay, so before I jump right into the content, um, it's just kind of like a challenge group. Even though it's a one hour event, the more prepared that you and your coaches are, the more successful you'll be. When we first did this, we didn't do any, you know, prior to, we invited everyone to it. And then right on the hour, we just jumped right into doing the, this power hour and everybody was lost. They didn't know what materials they were supposed to bring with them. You know, they didn't realize they needed to have their, their contact list of people that they were going to be reaching out to, et cetera. So even though a lot of the people that are in these power hours have done them now numerous times with us, we always post the day prior, letting them know, you know, hey, we're so excited, get your PJs on, because most of the time it's at night, um, you know, get your favorite drink in hand, and here are the things you're gonna need. You'll need a contact list. And we have them actually bring a list of people that has their coaches, potential coaches and potential challengers, because within the live power hour, they're inviting to both, depending on what time of the month it is too, if we're promoting challenge groups or if we're promoting coaching opportunity events. We also want them to bring a personal development book. And the reason we do this is you'll see the very first post, we pause everything and we dive 10 minutes into personal development. Because this is the first thing, I know for me, that I skip over of the vital behaviors. I can do my workout, I can do my Shakeology, but for some reason that 10 minutes of personal development is just so easy to go, it's only 10 minutes of reading, right? And then I'll dive into it. The first two pages, I'm like taking a hundred different notes. So we kind of eat that frog and just get that personal development right out of the way. And we have them list. So when we post this day prior to start and keep in mind, you guys, when we create the event, every post moving forward pertaining to the event, is posted in the event itself. I don't go back out into the group and, and do these, you know, getting started posts. It's right within the, the event. So those people that have accepted to join the event, they're the ones getting these notifications. Um, and then we also have them start brainstorming ideas for a social media post. Because even though it's a power hour and ideally we should know who we're gonna be reaching out to at that time, Sometimes when you're on the spot, you have like a total, you know, foggy brain, right? It's like writer's block. If I said, hey, go out and do this, on a normal day, it'd be easy to go, oh, I'll just do a quick post about my workout. But when you're on the spot, you're thinking, do I post about my workout? Do I post about my kids? Like, should I be doing psychology right now? So we kind of have them brainstorm what their a social media post is going to be about. And then there's a section in the actual content where we have them post about that. So um, with that, we'll go ahead and just... Here's my top nine things, and then I'll show you the actual girth of each of these nine. So the first one, like I said, we dive right into personal development. And each of these nine actionable items have time limits, and we post on that post. So as soon as I you know, post out there, hey, here's your 10 minutes of personal development, we, we tell them you're, you get 10 minutes. So every post that we do, we tell them how much time is being allowed, and it's it falls along in the lines of the vital behavior. So we should be doing you know 10 to 15 minutes a day of personal development. So we make sure we're giving you 10 minutes of personal development for your power hour. So it's really true to a power hour that you would be doing on your own, even if you weren't doing these live power hours. So the first one is personal development. The second one, invite, invite, invite. The third one is the coach online office. Four is social media, five, networking, six is your follow-ups, and these are old follow-up messages, not from the invites you're doing within the Power Hour, and I'll explain that more. Seven is recognition, eight, engagement, and nine is return all messages. And then we do give them a bonus at the end. Um, basically, it just says repeat this every day for success, and that's their bonus tip. So with that, let me share with you then my content. And I'm more than happy to send this Google Doc over to you guys. I won't read through all of it. Obviously, you guys can read through it and, and edit it to yourself. But you'll see where we have the day prior to start. It's that exact um, verbiage that I copied there. 
And then two hours prior, we give them a reminder because again, it's nine o'clock at night that we're doing these. Um, ideally, it's you know after dinner, after people are putting the kids to bed, once we settle in. But what happens is by nine o'clock at night, you're settling in and you're completely forgetting you committed to this power hour because maybe your spouse has come home or you know kids are running um, late for going to bed, whatever. So we wanna make sure that we give them a reminder. We do at least one. You can do as many, obviously, reminders as you want. So the first one, we talk about personal development. And then we also explain kind of how this next hour is going to go. So you'll see here, I put personal development 10 minutes. I don't add the nine o'clock, that's just for my own because usually when I'm doing these posts, I'm still cooking dinner myself or I'm doing laundry, so I just make sure I have a little timer set. So about a minute prior to when the next post is due, I already have it queued in that event. So as soon as it hits on that minute, I just click on you know post. So the first one is your personal development for 10 minutes. And then we have them actually put what their personal development book is. So not only are they following along with each of the posts in the power hour, but they actually have to show that they're doing it. So we give them an actionable item in every post. So the personal development one is post below what you're doing for personal development. This gives other people, other coaches ideas as well, because I know when coaches first start on my team and we start talking personal development, the first thing they say is, oh, I don't like to read books. And they think that personal development is just reading books and it's not, it's audio, it's listening to webinars or even if they want to go back and their personal development is listening to the recording of the national wake up call. We count that as personal development because something is better than nothing. And then 10 minutes later, we post invite, 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 and we give them a good 10 minutes as well because this one takes time. So we basically say nothing like eating that frog, just go out and invite. These have to be done in order because if they're not done in this order, there's, you know, activities a couple posts down that relate to a prior post. So we have them do their invites, but what we found was a lot of coaches weren't sure what to invite to and they weren't sure what to say. So now we actually include sample scripts. If they're inviting a challenger to a challenge group, here's a sample invite. If they're inviting someone to a coaching opportunity, here's also a sample invite. What we've done also in the past is let your coaches know prior to the power hour when your next team challenge group is and also when your next team coach opportunity event is because then they could take it one step further and in their invitation actually have a concrete date of what they're inviting to because there's nothing like going out there and saying, hey, I'd love for you to invite my challenge group and you don't even have a challenge group in mind. You're, put, you're playing that reversal where, well, if I get some people interested, then I'll plan a challenge group. Don't do it that way. Have your challenge group date set and if you're not running one yourself, piggyback on your upline is what we tell everybody. And then when, once they're done with this particular assignment, we have them post the first names of the three people they send invites to. And when we first started doing these power hours, we wouldn't have anyone respond to this. And we're like, did they do it? Now that we actually give them sample scripts and they know at the very beginning who they're going to be reaching out to, this is done. They don't even need the whole 10 minutes. They copy and paste. They're throwing out names. Sometimes they'll post the names of five people that they invited because they're already excited about um, you know, the information that we're offering to them. So post number three, we give them five minutes to do this, and it's to check the coach online office. And these are things in this power hour, you'll notice these coach, coaches should be doing every day, but I'll be the first to admit, I sometimes forget to check my coach online office. It might be a day or so, and I'm like, oh, how many success club points do I have? That's usually my trigger to go look at my coach online office when I know I should be sending out my thank you orders for all my new orders that were placed my uh, welcome emails to my new customers that I've got from my customer lead program or over to my site. So we give them um, a little bit of time to check the coach online office. Keep in mind, they might not need this time every single day because we don't get new customers every single day unless you're having people purchase from your site, but as far as customer leads, et cetera. So this is just something that we give them and say, this should be done every day, even if you look back there and there's nothing that you need to do. These are, you know, once you see that new customer come in or new order come in, then we give them the scripts for that. So, you know, here's to a new customer. It's a little bit lengthier than a thank you message. Typically my thank yous are because of people that have already ordered before, so I don't have to go and do a whole 
introduction. So we give them the welcome email script and then we give them a, a quick little thank you for your order script as well. Because believe it or not, if these new coaches that start off, they get so nervous when they get their first customer and either they don't send anything at all or they send this whole big old you know book about the, you know, how they got started and how amazing their products are, et cetera, et cetera. So at least this gives them a little bit of um, information of what to send without sending too much. It's we say we it's touching the customer without you know throwing up all over them. Everyone good so far? Seeing some nods. Okay. So the number four is the social media post, and we give five minutes. And remember. Uh, in the prerequisites, I guess you could say, we had them brainstorm a social media post. We're only giving them five minutes. So if they don't have an idea of what they're gonna post, that idea creation can sometimes take up the whole entire five minutes. So it's better that they know coming into the power hour what they're gonna post about. And then we just remind them of the rule of thumbs, about posting, etc. Again, a lot of these coaches are seasoned coaches, so they know this but we keep the information in there for all those new coaches that kind of drop in every once in a while. And it's just a good reminder because even if you've been a coach for a while, sometimes you think you've got it all down and yeah, you know, you think you're doing things and you're, you're not doing them because you're used to be in the habit of doing them, et cetera. So um, we just keep reminding the 80, 20 rule. And then at the bottom here, their actionable item is we have them share in the power hour what they actually shared on their page. And we do give them some posting ideas. So, you know, in our call that we had last week, our mastermind call, um, we talked about having a marketing plan. So this kind of falls within that marketing plan is knowing what you're posting about every day. On my calendar, I actually have two things a day that give me ideas and those are reoccurring. So, you know, this morning I woke up and it said uh, like home office and workout, I think. So I know those are two ideas today that I could post about if I'm sitting in front of my computer going, what should I be posting about today? So always have a posting plan. All right, and number five is networking. So we give five minutes to do this. And it's just like they say, add three people a day to your network. Um, and then we have them post the names of the people that they added below. These are people they can find from referrals from um, you know other people, from their like page if they run a like page. If they're just totally at a loss and they don't know where to find people, we have them brainstorm um, kind of what their interests are and then we have them go out and find those interest groups. So you'll see in here, you know, if you own a dog or if you're into baseball, because nobody can come out and say, oh, I couldn't find anyone to network with today. No, are, are you a mom? Are you know, do you do sports? Do you do anything outside of, you know, your beach body life? Go out and search on Facebook for those types of groups and then join the group and start networking with the people within that group. Don't obviously start introducing yourself as a beach body coach, et cetera. We truly want to build those relationships, but that's one step or one extra idea if you're falling short of where to find people to network with. And then number six is your follow-up, and we give five minutes for this. This is not a follow-up, and we remind them in this post that this is not a follow-up to the people that you just invited with a couple posts before. That comes at the end. Your follow-up is essentially your archives. Who did you reach out to two days ago? Who is still pending for a challenge pack? Who um, reached out and had a question about coaching that you haven't got back to? Your follow-ups should be a, a history of your email program, whether you use Outlook or Gmail, whatever, your Beachbody emails, your Facebook emails, and any other social media messaging that you have. So make sure you're checking that. A lot of people aren't familiar with Instagram direct messages. So if you're on Instagram and you've never used that messaging tool before, I actually just got another one today. I'm like, oh my gosh, no one ever messages me here. <laughs> and they sent me a message. So make sure you're checking all of those areas. So quickly, just go out, do those follow-ups. Um, you know, always create that sense of urgency. Also, I like to throw that out there like, hey, just wanted to check in with you. We have a deadline coming up in two days. Didn't want you to miss out. So that's recreating the excitement for people. And then also, if anyone's like me, they don't want to miss out on an opportunity, even if they don't need to lose weight, if they know that they're going to be part of this challenge group with other people and posting every day, chances are they'll do it. And then we provide the sample follow-ups as well. So it's a little bit different than your invite. You don't need to recreate your whole invitation to people, and that's what we say to them. Just do a quick follow-up, just so they know that you're still there and that you're checking in on them. Number seven is recognition, and this is our fourth vital behavior. And we actually added this in before it officially came a vital behavior, so we were really excited. Um, 
when they, it was official. So recognition is so important, and this should be done. If you're doing this power hour, obviously every day, there's nothing wrong with doing recognition every day. You can come up with something to recognize somebody. It doesn't always have to be a challenger or a coach. Maybe um, your little sister graduated you know, from college, or your neighbor um, just put up a new fence and their fence has been broken for a couple of years. I don't know. Go out there and praise people. Every little bit, people love to see their name tagged. They love little high fives. They love great jobs. Even if it's the smallest thing, it will go a long way. Obviously, you want to make sure you're recognizing your coaches and challengers on a consistent basis, but it doesn't have to be that same thing every single day. And then we ask them, you know, who did you recognize? All right, coming up towards the end. So number eight is your engagement. Now, what we have them do is we have them take five minutes to go back into their Facebook page history and then like and comment on um, people that are liking and commenting on their post. One, this kind of knocks two birds out with one stone. Because when you do a post, if somebody comments on it, the more engagement that post has, the more exposure it's gonna have in the newsfeed. So if you go back, for example, to your Facebook like page, and I, maybe you had a post at eight o'clock last night, and then today's Monday morning, go back out to that post. Even if you only have two or three people that have commented, tag them and comment back. So if it was a post about Mother's Day and you shared a picture of your kids, and someone put cute kids, Maybe you'll tag them back and, you know, thanks, Sally. Your kids are adorable, too. How old are they? That brings that post back up to the news feed. It sparks conversation with that person, and you never know where that conversation or communication will go. Next thing you know, they're, you know, Sally might be messaging you back, like, you know, they're only two. I still have this baby weight on two years later. Ta-da! You're now taking that into a private messaging and forming with that person. So engagement is super important. If you are throwing information out there and people are taking the time to like and comment, um, you know, do your due diligence as a coach and go back. It's like thanking them for their comment when you're tagging back. It's showing that you actually see that they're messaging you and, you know, engaging on your post. All right. So that was the engagement. And then the next thing is number nine is return all messages. So we give them a good 10 minutes at the end of the power hour to return all messages. Like we mentioned, in the second post where it was invite, 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 if people are responding back to them, we tell them in that second post, don't, don't get back to them. Like they can hang out for another 15, 20 minutes. Like don't get so excited that someone responded back that you forget all the rest of your power hour stuff. Get through the rest of your power hour, then take that last 10 minutes or more, because now we're at the end, and then go back and respond. So then you can respond to all those invites or, you know, if people responded back to the follow-ups that you sent to them, et cetera. So, you know, and we throw out there, here's some tips of areas to check. And we just kind of um, reiterate, you know, where they should be checking for all their messages so that they don't miss out on anything. And then the last thing is, like we mentioned, the bonus. Even though we tell them it's only nine things, at the end of the power hour, we, we do, you know, congratulate them, tell them what a great, you know, great night it was, et cetera. And then just as a reminder that they should be doing this every day. So the bonus is the tip that they should then put this power hour, actually schedule it um, on their calendar for the next day. So that's all that I had. Any questions? Wahoo. Great content. I love that you can keep it to exactly an hour. That was awesome. And some coaches want to go further, so that can be where that last, um, you know, 10 minutes can extend. Because I know once I get into messaging people back and forth and communication and that door's open, you can be messaging people for a good half hour or more. So that's why we leave it at the end. Definitely. But I love that you also explain why working out in your Shakeology is not included into that. So very, very cool, that last paragraph that you included. Will you um, unshare your screen, and so then that way we can see what questions are are coming okay. forward because this is awesome. Okay. Ladies, what questions do you have for Daphne? And we have another one this week. It's going to be on Thursday. So if anyone wants to be a spy or I'll, I mean, I schedule it through my team. So they, yeah, I'll have to see how that would work. But <laughs> I was going to say, if you wanted to jump on one, or obviously you can run with it yourself too, but it's open to anybody. Very cool. That was great. Thank you so much. And yeah. So um, you mentioned possibly sharing that Google Doc. That would be so cool to be able to see that and 
see the wording you had for the little examples and things. That would be great. Yeah, I'll post the link in our mastermind group. Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> love it, love it. Ashley C, did you have a question? No? You're just nodding. Love it. Ashley M, are you still there? Still putting away groceries? I'm still here, still putting away groceries. Um, no questions. I do this a similar thing in my team. We love it. Very, very cool. Okay, well. To catch on. So even if you don't have a lot of coaches that are participating, we've probably done this a handful of times now. And the one we did two weeks ago, I think it was the third, the one before that, um, it was like the best one ever. And it really, it, it takes consistency. So it's kind of like your challenge, your challenge up on them, you know, if only a couple people are doing it. Because the one we had the other day, it was at nine o'clock. I think it was either eight or nine o'clock at night. And people were just on a roll. Some of our discount coaches were selling challenge packs from it. It was amazing. They just popped on just to see what it was like. And at the end, I mean, they were probably the more engagement that we've had, even of our season coaches. It was pretty cool to see. I have a question. Um, so on yours, I've seen other people do it where they do it like a Zoom and then they verbally say what they're doing next and everyone's kind of on there and you can see everyone. Um, is yours like that also in addition to the event page or are you only just posting in the event page and everyone's doing their own thing? Is there no actual interaction? We just do it straight from the event page. So there's no audio at all. And like I said, I'm usually multitasking. So I just set a quick reminder. And that's also why I have each of the times listed by the post. So I just stay on track myself with the post. <laughs> I've heard that people do the Zoom and then record them. I think last week someone was mm -hmm. mentioning that. They record the Zoom and just uh, send out a power that way. Other Ashley, what do you do? Do you record it? We do we Zoom. We do. We had done the Zoom and the um, with kind of we did both. Like we would post like exactly the script like she posted, and we are live on the Zoom. But I think our downfall was the timing. So I really, really, really love the idea of having three. Um, different leaders and have it be nine o'clock wherever you are. I think that is like a huge takeaway for us. I can't wait to try it. Yeah, we have done a Zoom, but I like the idea of not doing a Zoom. I don't want to do any more Zoom calls. I'm on enough of them. I think that I like the idea of just an event and just. Mm -hmm. Well, and switch it up. Keep your coaches on their toes. You know, have them try different things that will work. The beautiful thing is if you try it as an event and it works great, keep on doing it and then it'll be an yeah. easy thing to then duplicate the light power hour on as far as the zoom goes too is awesome as well if you want to get that interaction that connection you know if, if it kind of bleeds yeah. into your team call i have coaches that do that that do it on a bi-weekly and so every other week instead of a team call they're jumping on a live power hour so really mm -hmm. decide what works out for you you know try both of them see what works best so i love it daphne great daphne. content I have a question that's um, actually completely random, has nothing to do with this topic, but it's something that um, we've been talking in our team about team calls. So for my team calls, I normally have content that's prepared, some sort of training topic that I go over. I usually do a slide, kind of like what um, Daphne just did, and it's for learning, and one of my diamond coaches is like, you're doing it all wrong. We should just get on the team call and just talk to each other every single time. So how are you doing team calls in your team? Are you training them with content or just talking? Um, well, I personally, so Shelly, and I host one on Mondays right after the national wake-up call that's more content-driven, but we empower other leaders on the team to lead those just like these. And then on Fridays, I pull my group into – a zoom that's just 30 minutes long both of those are 30 minutes long and we pretty much just I give any kind of recognition shout outs and then you know if I have anything I really want to speak on but I keep it to about five minutes and then we just completely open it up and honestly it's one of the most beautiful things that it's one of my favorite part of the whole week is just hearing what's on their mind and sometimes we just talk about motherhood other times we're talking about you know business but it's just a real real bonding camaraderie building time so and is that just with your personally sponsored or your whole team? That's with um, my, anyone that's below, directly below me and that's a part of either my PS coaches or my PS coaches. Anyone I'm mentoring essentially, but like not, not, not like my uplines coaches, just my, my PS coaches and their coaches. 
we do a monthly call. So the first, it's 30 minutes. The first 15 minutes, um, go, we go over team stats, like, you know, how many coaches we signed on that last month, who the top recruiters are. We go through success club, you know, recognition. Um, we also throw out how many coaches are in the downline because my coaches like to see that growth every single month. And then the last 15 minutes I do pot topic, but then that's only once a month. Every Thursday I do a coach coffee talk and that's more of a drop in Q and a more geared towards the new coaches that are going through training. But with, you know, if you don't have any new coaches that are kind of going through that phase right there, I've had other coaches just drop in. We talk about like uh, Ashley was saying, um, motherhood stuff. We talk about elite qualifications, like it's all over the board. So that's kind of more of our free form weekly, but then our monthly call, it's team and topic. Okay. Thank you. That's helpful. Yeah. But I will say I made a massive error of not making it knowing that it was going to be a short call because I've had them go like hour and a half, two hours long, literally of just sitting there hashing through and screen sharing. And I mean, it's come like huge growth has come from it. I'm not going to lie. Like it's been incredible for a lot of the leaders, but it's obviously not productive for me to sit on a zoom call for two hours. So having to um, make those shorter has been hard, but good. I know I'm personally struggling with that same balance of my business and my coach's business. And it's something that I've always struggled. And I think it's because I'm, I'm that helper that wants to help everybody, but I'm at a point where I'm like, I don't want to waste any more time. I'm already doing three calls a week between people pushing the Emerald, people pushing the diamond and a team call. I'm like, I don't want to do any more calls. I don't want to do anything else. Um, but focus on my own business. Cause I feel like I'm lacking in my own personal business. I'm taking a huge step back from my team, kind of, like just not being, I don't want to sit on a Zoom call all the time. Okay, great question. So let's just, um, let's just sum it up. Okay, let's just end the call because that was such great content, obviously, but I really hope that you take this to your team. Really, if you haven't had an opportunity to try the non-live power hour, try it out. And then if that doesn't work, go back to the live, whatever works for you. But Daphne, great content. Thank you so much for sharing all that. Love the nine tips. Love that lucky number nine. You always, you always do that. So mm -hmm. other than that, ladies, you all have an amazing week. Is there anything else that we need to go over real quick before we end? No. Okay. Thanks again, girlfriend. That was awesome. Thank you. Take care, ladies. Enjoy your Monday. Bye. Bye-bye.